This one, this one hits home because guys, we are social media influencer or classified as that or a content creator. Now, of course, my channel has primarily in the past focused on how to's and guides, but it moved into news, right? We did have crypto.com as a sponsor for the channel. Now, luckily, the way we handled that crypto.com sponsorship was to say that we only utilize their card for, of course, cashing out our crypto. So we never suggested to purchase anything. We definitely never said to purchase any crow or anything like that. So from that perspective, I think I handled that quite well. Now, why, why do you see here? I wanted to talk to you guys about this because this is interesting. There was a, some uh, sentiment surrounding uh, my channel, I think sometime last year where I had a lot of people reaching out. I had sponsors reaching out, a lot of people that were getting mad at me for turning down sponsorships. I had people like curse me out and be like, why the fuck wouldn't you take the bag? That sort of thing. Uh, you know, take the bag while you can, take the bag while you can. And I'd say, no, I don't feel comfortable with it. I won't take coin sponsorships. I won't take, you know, these types of things. And people always kind of like wondered why, right? Especially when you would see like a $10,000 coin offer, right? Like review this coin, get do one video, get ten thousand dollars. The reason why is not because I'm perfect and like not swayed by money. It's just because I have a little bit more experience than everybody else in the sector. Why? Because I've been through this before. I've seen it all before. I knew that I didn't want to end up behind bars, bro. I don't want to end up in a position like BitBoy Crypto where I have to worry about it. I don't want to end up even in a position that Voscoin is in where he has to worry about some of this stuff. Because the fact of the matter is, is that in this industry, you can be guilty by association and if you are large enough as a platform, like if we had grown to the size of BitBoy or something, and we had not adhered to our principles and, fu and the fundamentals of crypto and kept a clean slate, we would be in the position of these current content creators, right? Now, these ones are specifically on Twitter. They haven't started going after YouTubers yet, necessarily. I mean, some of these guys maybe do have this. And I do want to say that I don't necessarily think that these are all allegations. So there's not necessarily that anybody here actually did anything wrong. I also am not a supporter of the letter organizations in the U S meaning sec, FBI, <laughs> FTC, blah, 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 CFTC, right? Like I'm not a fan of those in general. I just am not. I think, right. I'm, I lean more libertarian here. I'm going to say it comes down to personal responsibility. And yeah, I don't think it's cool to take advantage of people. But one of the, I, I believe the line was something like, only like a coward appeals to law, right? If you Meaning like, I think like, well, it's basically either only idiots or cowards uh, appeal to law. And the the idea behind that is like, there's a certain point where, you need to be smart enough not to fall for these things, right? And you need to take some personal responsibility. And if you did come to find out that somebody did take advantage of you, you know, you need to call that person out, right? You don't appeal directly to law. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the idea of being a tattletale when you're a kid or whatever. Now, is that always going to be true? Do you need somebody to administer the law? I think in certain circumstances, yes. Um, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out with cryptocurrency too. I just want to make it clear that like, this is not necessarily a condemnation, nor do I think that like any of these guys belong in jail because frankly, I don't even know uh, what the full cases are. Hopefully we'll learn a little bit here, but the SEC charges eight social media influencers in $100 million stock manipulation scheme promoted on Discord and Twitter. Now, in particular for this one, guys, it does appear that it's going to be surrounding like these meme stock things, right? So the Securities and Exchange Commission today announced charges against eight individuals in a $100 million securities fraud scheme in which they use social media platforms, Twitter and Discord, to manipulate exchange-traded stocks. According to the SEC, since at least January 2020, seven of the 
the defendants promoted themselves as successful traders and cultivated hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter and in stock trading chat rooms on Discord. These seven defendants allegedly purchased certain stocks and then encouraged their substantial social media following to buy those selected stocks by posting price targets or indicating they were buying, holding, or adding to their stock position. However, as the complaint alleges, uh, when share prices and or trading volumes rose in the promoted securities, the individuals regularly sold their shares without ever having disclosed their plans to dump the securities while they were promoting them. As our complaint states, the defendants used social media to amass a large following of novice investors and then took advantage of their followers by repeatedly feeding them a steady diet of misinformation, which resulted in fraudulent profits of approximately $100 million, said Joseph Sanson, chief of the SEC Enforcement Division Market Abuse Unit. Today's action exposes the true motivation of these alleged fraudsters and serves as another warning that investors should be wary of unsolicited advice they encounter online. The following seven individuals were charged with securities fraud. Now, this is alleged, but I will say if you recognize any of these names, just be aware that they could be unscrupulous, right? So you have PJ Matlock on Twitter, Mr. Zach Morris on Twitter. Uh, oh, hey, Tommy on Twitter, Notorious Alerts on Twitter, Hugh Hen on Twitter, Lady Back on Twitter, and Ultra Calls on Twitter. The complaint further charges Daniel Knight of Texas with aiding and abetting the alleged scheme by, among other things, co-hosting a podcast in which he promoted many of the other individuals as expert traders and provided them with a forum for their manipulative statements. Knight also traded in concert, uh, concert with the other defendants and regularly generated profits from the manipulation. The SEC's complaint filed in the U.S. District Court of the Southern District of Texas seeks permanent injunctions, disgorgement, prejudgment interest, and civil penalties against each defendant, as well as a penny stock bar against H.R. Vadden. Uh, criminal charges against all eight individuals were also filed in a paralegal action brought by the Department of Justice's fraud section and the U.S. Attorney's auction for the Southern District of Texas. The SEC's investigation, which is ongoing, is being handled by Andrew Pallid, uh, Pallid David Scheffler, and Michelle T. Perio of the Market Abuse Unit in the Boston Regional Office with assistance from Darren Borner of the MAU, Stuart Jackson, Catherine Schumann Foster, and Marina uh, Martinova of the Division of Risk of er, Risk and Economic Analysis, DARA, and ha uh, Howard Kaplan of the Office of the Investigative and Market Analytics. So there you go. Um, the investigation resulted from a referral from the Division of Examinations by Mark A. Jera, John Cackmore, and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, these are talking about stocks, meme stocks, that sort of thing. But this exact practice has been going on in crypto for a long time. You remember those coins at the beginning of this that I mentioned would offer $10,000 for you to talk about them on your cryptocurrency YouTube channel? Yes, I have been tagged and been in many, many email chains where they did not even blind copy some of the other recipients. And I did notice at a certain point that some of these content creators were doing videos on this coin. Now, do I have specific actual you know, proof that these content creators were taking the payment from these coins and then making the videos about them? No. All I do have is essentially the fact that they got the email and then they proceeded to create a video about the coin and usually that coin ended up in a dump. There is no actual solid proof that I have that they, that they did it that they accepted payment, but these are things that happen, right? There is some 
you know, of these YouTubers that will probably end up in a position similar to, of course, what we see here, especially as the crackdown on cryptocurrency and the focus on cryptocurrency due to FTX is kind of magnified, right? It's going to be a lot of ants underneath that magnifying glass. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.